Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth here. So I wanted to do this video in regards to how spiritual development takes a lot of time, energy, and effort. I know a lot of people in life, um, you know, they tend to start to find themselves when they go through a lot of hardships in life or when they hit rock bottom. A lot of times when we're living a life of comfort, whether that's through the accumulation of material goods or just, you know, life is going well, you're making a lot of money. A lot of people tend to fall off the spiritual path because things are very comfortable. Um, if you look at research done by um, Pew, Pew Research Company, they did an, um, an uh, I guess like a, a research study or an article that I read, I think about two years ago, and it was saying that the poorest countries in the world are the most religious. And it's actually really interesting if you think about it, because the more affluent that the West has become, we're becoming less spiritual and godly human beings, um, regardless of if you identify to Christian values or Buddhism or whatever. And so, um, you know, everybody has a different opinion on spiritual development and how to go through through with that. I've definitely had a very unique life experience in terms of this. I've dabbled in a little bit of everything. Like I studied yoga in India. So I don't necessarily say it was like I didn't study Hinduism, but you know, the, the yoga sutras of Patanjali definitely had a lot of, it's like the Bible of yoga. It had a lot of very good key relevant points on how to function within yourself as far as personal growth, but also within society as well with the Yamas and the Niyamas. Um, yeah, so anyways, um, I do think if you are looking to do some form of spiritual path or cleanse, you have to start by cleaning out your physical vessel. That's your body. The type of food that you consume and what you consume in general in terms of like liquid consumption um, is very necessary to keep it as clean as possible. So if you're drinking a lot of alcohol um, or you're consuming, you know, high amounts of cannabis that's going beyond the areas of uh, medicinal use, I you're going to have adverse health effects from it because the more stimulants that you put into your body, eventually your body's going to need more and more of that stimulant and then it becomes kind of a codependent addiction or, you know, um, a lot of people have to socialize or a lot of people can socialize when they have a drink or a few drinks and that's a problem because everything is rooted up here into the mind and so if you can't socialize just without any sort of stimulus, that's a very low developed characteristic that we have within ourselves. I think a lot of highly de spiritually developed people, they tend to stay away from drugs and alcohol. One, because they don't need it. Two, it makes them feel like garbage. And three, it's like they can function and have normal life experiences and conversations without any sort of external substance. So you do need to clean out your physical vessel. A lot of this has to do with cooking from home. Obviously, a lot of millennials nowadays don't have cooking skills. Um, but it includes consuming a lot more produce, fresh fruits and vegetables. It's a combination of cooked and raw is ideal. People go on such hardline bandwagons about what's right and what's wrong and it's like whoa 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 like everything is a balance and it all has its use like in the winter time eating raw salads and smoothies is not practical and functional because it's really cold outside your body is craving warmer healthier foods so you're going to want to consume more soups or maybe um you know heartier vegetables that are roasted and things like that as compared to the summer you're not going to want to eat soup because it's hot as hell outside so you're going to want to probably consume more raw produce, um, such as salads or pineapple or smoothies, juices, freshly squeezed juices, things like that. So spiritual development comes first by cleaning out your vessel. I know in the past when I've been super clogged up mentally, emotionally, and just um, when I used to do a lot of emotional eating, I have done colonics. When I went to Thailand um, in 2008, I, I did like a three-day detox and part of that included a coffee colonic and it sounds kind of weird and gross but honestly it really worked and once that experience happened I kind of 
told one of my friends, I was like, I felt like I shitted out my emotions because it's like everything up here was so loose and free. And when you don't understand the body you, and, and you don't know what the enteric nervous system is and you don't know the gut brain connection, you don't realize how what the things that you put in your gut greatly affect what's going on up here. And if you believe in any spiritual theories or if you do understand how like dark forces are trying to destroy the human body in western civilization it's like the first way to control people is through the food and water system that's just kind of common sense so things like monsanto i just recently read that monsanto and Bayer are trying to take over the cannabis industry and it's like well isn't that interesting so spiritual development first comes through that. Um, the second step or stage is getting involved in something. Today I call myself a Christian mystic. You know, Christians will greatly disagree with me because they have certain beliefs or fears from things that are not from the, the Christian way of doing things. And I do agree with them to some realms because I do think a lot of darkness can confuse a lot of people because darkness can be masked as light. And a lot of people start dabbling in a lot of different things that end up um, being really confusing for the individual. But I do think you have to tap inward into your own intuition and into your mind. And the way that you can do that is through meditation and also through yoga. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be channeling like Hindu gods or anything like that. You can go to a yoga practice where it's completely physical in nature um, without any sort of like theory that's behind it. So, but meditation and being in quiet spaces, even if you're not you know, wanting to sit there like a yogi and meditate normally, you can still sit in a quiet space outside in nature or somewhere and have it be a spiritual enlightenment experience that is like meditation. Meditation can also be in motion. I go through like forms of meditation when I'm cycling on a bike because it's like the connection of your body, the movement of your body with like the beat of the music or whatever you're listening to is euphoric in itself. It's why people love things like dancing. It's because the movement of the body with the flow of the music is is a dance. It's a dance not only with our physical form, but it is also with like the hormones that we're excreting internally. So I really believe that there's such a disconnect to understanding how the human body works. And I think if people understood how the human body works, they can understand how things work in the external world. So you, with meditation or things like yoga or sitting in a church quietly and being with yourself and praying or whatever, you're tapping into the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest phase of the nervous system, which is opposite of fight or flight, which is from the sympathetic nervous system. So it allows you to be one in the moment, connected not only to yourself, but to your higher source, to whatever God that you believe in. Um... And when you want to further develop yourself, then you can start getting more into some, like, the theory-based things. Like, I have studied, so I mean, I've studied Reiki, uh, some forms of energy healing. I'm not as deep into certain things like that as some people, but I've studied enough to where it's like I understand how the spiritual realm works. And um, understanding that when you put yourself through certain spiritual experiences, you are growing yourself internally, but also externally as well. And you will end up finding your path. Um, I definitely feel like I've always probably kind of been a Christian throughout all the times that I've dabbled in other things. It's just like it took me like eight or nine years to kind of get to that path of realization that I just went full circle and it's like, oh man, like I really do believe in a lot of like traditional values. Like I treat my body like a temple and stuff like that. But it takes a lot of time, energy, and effort to become spiritual. And this is kind of like maybe the first step of my thoughts in, in a very long discussion with this. But you have to clean out yourself, and the more you clean yourself out, the more you can start to analyze and see things differently. Now, people perceive the world in so many different ways that it, 
it's hard, you know, and a lot of us live in these echo chambers where it's hard to understand various points of view. But the more that you can detach from junk food, the more you can start to analyze certain things that are happening um, in life and in nature around us. So anyways, these are just some thoughts that I had for today. Um, I think 